He's had as much success as anyone in pretty much every field and yet suffers from low self-esteem? I am a huge believer in low self-esteem. It is the key. <laughs> it is the key to success. Listen, you know you're pretty funny when you can make setting yourself on fire into a joke. I set myself on fire. <laughs> I'm not supposed to say that. The challenge. Jay, let me ask you about the challenge. Of <laughs> the explosion. Of a legend of comedy, a late-night TV icon, a best-selling author. Is there anything he can't do? Jay Leno. I'm the pulse. You know what we do, talking to outstanding people, doing tremendous things. We've had some amazing guests on, but I don't often get to talk to a legend. You say you don't like to necessarily call yourself a comedian, but what what got you into it in the first place? I always liked comedians when I was a kid, you know, and my dad was a funny guy. My dad was an insurance salesman. He was a prize fighter first, then he became an insurance salesman. Actually, he became an insurance salesman. I asked him why he quit fighting for money and he said because even on his best day at work he still got punched in the face and i went that that's a bad job imagine going to work every day and you're gonna get punched in the face you know so that, that, that's a that's a bad job it was a pretty big family and my mother was from scotland and my dad was italian and the both sides would fight for your attention you know like the Italian, yeah, come here, come here. Still eating that crappy Scottish food? You, 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 come over here, take one of these meatballs. Here you go, there. don't tell your mother, you know. And they always put five dollars in your pocket. You know, there's always like a friendly rivalry going on and stuff. And and, and then when I go on the Scotch side, they go, Jamie, the Italian people, they waste food, Jamie. Jamie, there's only four people here, but there must be 15 meatballs. There's no reason to make so many meatballs. You know, and they would just com and they would just complain about each other. And it was fun being in the middle because each one, ooh was trying to get your attention, you know, get you to like them more than the other group. I think it probably comes from family. So that's where it started. And you sit back and you look at it. So you don't necessarily define yourself as a comedian, although, you know, some would. Late night host, your children's book, best-selling no, no, comedian, comedian is fine. The other stuff is just ancillary. I am a huge believer in low self-esteem. It is the key <laughs> It is the key to success. You know, uh, my attitude is most people can't do anything. And some people can do one thing. And there are a few people, like Jamie Foxx, to me, is the yeah. consummate performer. He can sing, dance, uh, do comedy, win Grammys, win comedy albums. You know, he does everything exceptionally well. I, I do one thing I think pretty good. I do the stand-up comedy thing. Everything else is, whew, that was pretty lucky. And and that's the way I go through life. You know, I try to hire the best people I can, uh, listen to what they say, try and take their advice. Don't become an egomaniac. And, it, it, you know, that's what I like. When I do The Tonight Show, I just say to people, tell me what sucks. But it seems like you've had a very successful career just kind of being you. Like, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, that's really true. You know, and you try to stay true to that. Like, for example, I... I don't drink, not because of any moral religious reasons. I just don't have any interest in drugs or alcohol. And when I was doing The Tonight Show, people offer you huge money, like a million dollars. Just hold up this can of whatever alcoholic beverage this is and say you like it. And I go, you know, I, I, but then when I go out on the road, hey, let me buy you one of those. I don't, I don't drink. You don't drink. Now you're a hypocrite, you know? I remember when, when, when George Clooney got ER. People stop and say, hey, will you take a look at this scar? I go, I'm not really a doctor. Yeah, I know you're not a doctor, but you know about it, right? No, I don't really. Well, just take a look. See, you know, to the point where you, you, it just drives you crazy, you know? Whereas to me, people come up and they ask me something about a comedy or a guest or one of my cars or something. And I actually enjoy it. Is any of this even surprising to you? That kind of doing that and, as they say, keeping it real has translated yeah, I, to so I, much I laugh. I laugh every day. You know, when I have like a president of the United States on, I could just wish my mother, oh, Jamie, you're talking to the oh, Mr. Showa. Like when I got the Tonight Show, it originally was the Tonight Show starring Jay Leno. Mm -hmm. And my mother, being from Scott, oh, Jamie, starring Jay Leno. Oh, like you're Mr. Big Shot, you got to put your knee in my. Go, wow, that's what they do in show. Well, I think, let's see, I'm starring Jay Leno. Don't you have other people on the program? Aren't they just, you know, I go, okay, my. So I changed it to Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Oh, that's much better. You're not you're not blowing your own horn all the time. When I, w I was on the cover of Time magazine, and I called my mom and said, I'm on the cover of Time Watch. She goes, which one? You know, Time. You know, it's like Newsweek, you know, Time. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, good, good. And so I said to her, listen, call Uncle Frank in Florida and call Aunt Faye in New Jersey and let them know I'm on. And there's a big pause. Mother goes, 
Well, you know, I think they put you on the cover of the ones they sell around here in Andover, Massachusetts, because they you're from here. I don't think you're on the cover. Down. I'm, on, I'm on the cover everywhere. No, no, I think they just do it for the because they know you're from this area. No, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm in every area. You know, she never, never got it. Never understood. The fact that you never become big like that, like among the people who are closest to you, I would imagine is a very balancing kind of thing. It was until I was opening for Perry Como like <laughs> 30 years ago. I told Perry, my mom's in the audience. So, so Perry went down and took my mom's hand and kissed her hand. Oh, 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 oh. Now, now I was in show business. Oh, that was, oh, Jay gets the big meatball on Sunday when he comes to dinner now. That's when I was officially in show business. Perry Como is what put it over the top. Oh, yeah. Yeah, my parents, they never understood. When they would go to, like, when they came to visit me here in California and, and my dad would buy something, they go, oh, Angel Leno, are you Jay Leno's father? My father would say, oh, did you go to Andover High School? Do you know Jay? <laughs> I'm dad, the guy, he knows me from TV. What, what? Yeah, he would think they knew me from the school or from the hardware store. Yeah, just, yeah, very funny. But was there ever a time throughout this career where you kind of went, wow, I... I am kind of a big deal. I'm sitting here with presidents. It is pretty amazing. I do, I, I do laugh about it. It does make me laugh. I mean, I've had dinner with every president since Gerald Ford, except Trump. I, I could miss that one. <laughs> That's the problem with comedy now. Like, when I go on the road, I don't do any politics anymore because people are enjoying the show. I have a good time. You mention one candidate or another, and right away, you've lost half the audience, mm -hmm. literally. It, I actually get 20 30% more ticket sales because people, oh, thank you. Can, can we not get a lecture? Can we just go hear something funny? Or Families are breaking up over this type of thing. Most people are in the middle. It's just the far left and the far right that drive you crazy. You know, I, met, I, had, I had President Biden on my show. It's a car show. President Biden's father was a Chevrolet distributor. So in 1967, when Joe got married, his dad gave him a new 1967 Corvette. Biden came on the show. We talked about the Corvette. Dear Miss Long, I'm not watching your show. You had that traitor, Joe Biden. First of all, he's not a traitor. He's president of the United. He's the president of the United States. I deliberately did not mention politics. I'm talking to another guy who happens to be president, who owns a car, and we talked about the president's car. And, and yeah, and and that's what you deal with. It, it, it's it's so ridiculous. Coming up next, still more with Jay Leno. Hey, I'll tell you a stupid story. This is what happens when you have the same friends you've had since high school. I said, all right, you want me to, I'll dial a number. I dial a number. I hear, Rocky, Mr. President? Yeah? Whoa. Jay Leno. Okay. My producer of this show is from Poland. She was thrilled because you to her represented the United States, these are her words, because you were the show that she could see in Poland. I, I think everybody should be a representative of who they are or what they are. You know, my dad, uh, my dad was Italian, as I mentioned. And when I was a kid, uh, every gangster on TV, like the shows like The Untouchables, they're all as Italian, you know, the Barzini gang, this so and so guy. And this, my, my, my father would get furious. And, oh, all the Italians, why well, they're all as gangsters? So when we would go out to eat, I would often have to have a jacket and tie because we were Italian and we represented something. And Kevin would always, every, every time uh, there was a black guy in the news for something stupid, Kev would go, Jay, Jay, do we have to do that? Kevin actually has been on the show twice with us and was here in studio. Uh, and we had kind of similar conversations. You know, one of the biggest thrills of my life was taking uh, Kev to Kev's mom with Kevin to meet President Obama. That was like, wow. she was like, oh my God, yeah, it was, it was really cool. It was really fun just to see the pride in her face, you know. But hey, I'll tell you a stupid story. This is what happens when you have the same friends that you've had since high school. Like I was, you know, I was bragging to my friends. I said, you know, when Obama was on, he gave me a cell phone. And because my friend, well, let's call him up. Like, I'm not going to call him. <laughs> Friends in the United States, you don't have it. Nah, uh huh, nah, uh huh, nah, uh. Like we're in the eighth grade again, you know. So I take out my phone and I, I cover the number. I go, see, President Obama, see, there's this cell phone down there. No, nah, you don't have it. We'll, we'll call him up. So now it's like, all right, now I have to prove to my idiot friend says this. So I'm, and what time is it now? It's 12 o'clock. It's three o'clock, Washington. Okay. I said, all right, you want me to, I'll dial the number. 
I dial a number. I hear Barack here, Mr. President. Yeah. Whoa. Jay, what can I do for you, Jay? Should I lose this number, Mr. President? Lose the number, Jay. Click, and he hangs up. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Coming up next, I was trying to be all sensitive and compassionate. He's telling jokes about catching on fire. I'm not supposed to make a joke about you blowing up. <laughs> you can, but you will as soon as I'm off the air. You know, Leno sounds up. Now, so you're on tour, coming to Hershey, November 17th. You must just really love this. Like, you don't have to tour. I like it better than doing television. You know, I know so many people that they do a Netflix special or something. Everybody sees it. They go on the road, and they're still doing the same show, and now the audience is mad because they're paying again for something they already saw three or four times. You know, so I, 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 I just like live performing. It's just, it's just fun for me. Jay Leno's Garage. I was looking right. at your YouTube page where it is now. Right. Um, three and a half million followers on your YouTube page watching it. Has that part of the industry change kind of been a positive thing for you? Because you could just do it yourself now and have huge audiences. Yeah, that's the interesting part about it. Yeah, yeah, you, you really can. And, uh, you know, I am not, <laughs> I'm not by nature an interesting guy. I don't lead a adventurous life. So to me, having the cars it makes it a whole different thing. You know, guys, men and women like automobiles, well, they'll talk to you, they'll come up, they ask you questions, suddenly you're a more interesting person. You realize you just said, I don't live a terribly interesting life two minutes after you talked about you and your friends well, calling the well, president but, on your no, cell phone. But, no, but see, that's the good thing about <laughs> doing the Tonight Show. Tonight Show, I could be in a Monk show business without being immersed in it. You know, I always use my example is Charlie Sheen, you know. I love Charlie. Charlie's a friend of mine. I don't want to be Charlie Sheen. But to just hear his antics, you know, every time hookers would roll one of his Mercedes Benz off Mulholland Drive into a ditch, it was hilarious. I mean, I'll tell you a great story about Charlie. One day, we, we got Charlie on the show, you know. It's like 4 o'clock. We tape at 5 o'clock. I go, Charlie's not here. Are anybody here? Okay. Then I hear, Jay, Jay, pick up your phone, uh, stage phone. It's Charlie Sheen. He goes, Jay, Jay, it's Charlie, man. Listen, <laughs> The limo got a T-boned by a car. You all right? I'm okay, man. I'm okay, but you know, caught on fire. And uh, anybody hurt? No, nobody got hurt. It's okay, but I just can't. I can, well, Charlie, look, just Charlie. We'll get a comic. We'll get somebody to fill in. Don't worry about it. Okay, just take care. Okay, take care. Okay. And then somebody's got TMZ or something on. And I go, anything about Charlie's accent? I said, get me the Charlie's limo driver. You know, so I said, hello, hey, it's Jay Leno. Tony, yeah, where are you? I'm outside Charlie's house. He hasn't come out yet. Oh. You didn't get T-boned on the 101? No. Okay. Right. Now, Charlie Sheen is like a four-year-old. There's a giant monster under the bed. It took the cookie. You know what I mean? He's, he's, I go, call the go, Charlie, how did you think this would work? Don't, don't you think people just, the limo got T-boned, it caught fire? And he's, well, I, I didn't, you know, I just, I'm a little wasted. I I said, it's fine. Just tell me you're wasted. I believe more you're wasted than you got T-boned. Yeah. yeah. So uh, by that, I mean, so I enjoy not being Charlie, not being the limo driver, but just being in and amongst all that kind of sort of nonsense, you know? So it makes your life interesting. From the outside, you were every bit and are every bit the celebrity of the people you're sitting with, and yet you well, still yeah. manage to stay at arm's length. Well, the fun part, like when I travel, I travel alone. I don't bring a road map because, you know, nothing funny happens to you when you have an entourage because everything is done for you. You know, like, I, I, w I was at the Wynn Hotel a couple of months ago. I, I'm in the lobby. I'm shaking hands with people, right? So I go, I go, let me wash my hands because, you know, COVID. So in the bathroom, and I got my hand under the sink, you know, I'm, I'm doing this, trying to get the water, you know, I'm just moving my hand. I'm there for like five minutes, and the attendant comes over and goes, uh, sir, got to turn the faucet. What? <laughs> okay. No, I look like a bad magician just standing there doing this. <laughs> and people are laughing. I go, okay, see, that wouldn't happen if I had a road manager or an assistant. They would go, could you clear the bathroom out? Mr. Leno's going to use. But, you know, I mean, that's that's what life is. And that, that's what really makes, that's what, that's what makes things funny to me. The whole situation a few years ago with the gas explosion and the challenges that you were facing um, with your health. 
Um, well, and I that makes me laugh. Challenges you are facing. I set myself on fire. <laughs> I'm not supposed <laughs> the, to say that. Challenge, Jay. Let me ask you about the challenge of <laughs> the explosion. Yeah, it's what I mean. It's a that's what I mean. You know, people get burned every day. And believe me, believe me. Now, what they say, people love to see rich, famous people catch on fire. For some reason, they find it fascinating. And to me, I just did a lot of jokes about it. And people appreciated that. Nobody wants to hear a woe is me. Oh, I got burned. I have been so incredibly lucky in my life to complain about things on TV. Oh, shut up. You're just a whiny celebrity now. Okay. I'm not supposed to make a joke about you blowing up. <laughs> you can, but you will as soon as I'm off the air. You know, Leno sounds on fire. And then um, you'd have some sort of Italian brajol joke. Is that true that you were just like shaking it off? You didn't even go to the hospital that day. Well, I went to the hospital. Then I told the hospital, they said, oh, we'll get your room. I go, well, I, I can't do it right now. My wife doesn't know anything about what happened yet. So I said, well, listen, let, let me go home. And and I'll come back in in the morning. Okay, so so I go home and I show my wife what happened and everything. Okay, and then I go to sleep. But unbeknownst, you know, since my face had been on fire, my face was stuck to the pillow. So I oh. woke up. I couldn't get the pillow off my face. So now I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm shredding this pillow. And I got pieces of pillow stuck in my face. So now, now I drive back to the hostel with pillow face, you know. And what happened? Well, my the skin melted and it melted in the pillow, and I, yeah, yeah. But but it's okay now. This is not supposed to be funny, but I guess that's why you're that's great why, at what you're you do. My, you're laughing at my face on fire, so I rest my case. No, I, I'm laughing at your explanation of your face on fire. Well, I always remember when Richard Pryor set himself on yeah. fire. His reason that he gave, he said he was having cookies and milk. And he usually uses Oreos, I think, but he had a Hydrox cookie. And when he put the Hydrox in the milk, the thing exploded. And his face, you know, it's just a stupid, re I mean, obviously he's doing some kind of meth or something. I don't know what he was doing, but he set himself on fire. But the idea that a Hydrox cookie would explode in milk, it really made me laugh. And that's that, That's what I thought about when uh, when I got set on fire, I said, I need a funny thing. November 17th in Hershey, you can check him out. My favorite thing now is when you're a celebrity, you never answer a question, you break your silence. <laughs> you know, or, you know, somebody asked me a question, I answered very calmly, and then the picture in the paper, Leno lashes out. And they have a picture of me sort of with my mouth open, you know. I didn't lash out, I answered the question quietly and succinctly you know but that's what they do and and break their silence i mean i saw that was a headline the other day with this horrible situation with matthew perry it says cast finally breaks their silence well people aren't silent everybody's talking about how sad it is how terrible it is yeah. but you always every has to be so dramatic to get a like to get a you know ooh, i i want to get a, a a hit on you know i'm breaking my silence with bill right now right Next on The Pulse, use your voice for good. To him, means helping out the young people. Something I like to do is uh, give scholarships. You know, when I first came to California, college was... The final quote for everyone is, what does the phrase, use your voice for good, mean to you? It means using your voice for good. Okay, right there, it's self-explanatory. <laughs> no, it's not. It means what different things to different people. It could be empowering people. It could be educating but, people. It could yes, be charity. All of, all of those fall under the under the title of good, correct? Yeah. So you you've answered your own question. Well, but I didn't ask me. I want to know what it means to you. Something I like to do is uh, give scholarships. You know, when I first came to California, college was free in the 70s. You, if you were a resident of California, you could go to a UCLA or one of those. You know, it's $15 a course or some crazy thing. Now it's hundreds. I, I don't understand why that is. I met a guy, he just came up to me as a fan and we got to be friends and he, he's going to college. I said, where are you going to go? He says, well, I'd like to go to UMass, but it's really expensive. And, you know, my, my mom's a single mom and all this kind of stuff. Okay. So I said, well, let me call her. How much is uh, UMass? It's pretty expensive. So I tracked down his mother and I said, listen, I'm, I'm going to pay his tuition. And, she, and, you know, she's crying by my Okay, so I do. So the kid goes. After a year, he calls me up. 
And he said, Miss Lennon, uh, I want to thank you. And I said, yeah, no problem, man. I'm glad it worked out. And he goes, listen, uh, thanks to you. I worked hard. I got a scholarship. I don't need your money anymore. Okay. Wow. You know, I, I've got a scholarship. That, and I said, you know, that's exactly what you're looking for. Here's a young man, didn't want charity, but took it because, you know, I, I'm making an investment. And he could have had a free ride for the next three years, but he didn't. He worked hard because he wanted to pay it back. And I was so impressed with that. My answer would be for good would be uh, giving scholarships. Now, see, if I hadn't asked that corny question, we wouldn't have gotten that great story about that young man. Well, see, I would have had another story, but I had to explain your thing first <laughs> up front. So, <laughs> touche. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Thank you so much. I appreciate Thank this. Thank you, this my was friend. Fun. I really, I really enjoy. Call me anytime. Fun talking to you. Can you do me? I'm asking favors before you go. Can you just how say, much? <laughs> I was thinking about going to UMass, but it's really expensive. I was sitting here telling the team in studio how much I appreciate people who could in fact be distant or jerks or be any number of things because of their level of success. And they're still just really good, quality, fun, humble people. And Jay Leno appeared to be all of those things. I appreciate him taking the time and I appreciate you watching. And I leave you today as I always do, reminding you whenever you can, even if Jay Leno thought it was corny, use your voice for good and have a good one.